Okay, class. Um, before we do our today's uh, session, I think we can look briefly at uh, what we did, the homework. Maybe we can get uh, two or three samples of how people have done the presentation of that. And that's when we move on to the next uh, topic. So we have uh, online already, Joseph. Uh, you'd like to share with us uh, what uh, your answer was? Okay, you've shared the, the screen there. Now, could you uh, go ahead to explain? I'm going to mute my mic. It's your time now. You can unmute yourself and then talk. Okay, yeah. Are you able to get me? Yes, we are, Joseph. Yes, yes. So what I did, uh, since there, the, the question was, uh, yeah, the question was very clear. At first, Kylie, they start, they start taught us to say we have to start with raw materials. We have to start with raw materials. So I, yeah, the, the um, on the on the the very same sheet where the where the, the the transactions were there was what we call materials used on jobs so uh i i i had to record materials used on jobs under raw materials yes because it's part of the the, the raw materials which is 120,540 so there was also what we call courage inwards on raw materials so i added it because for materials used on jobs these are materials that we purchase yeah, so I added uh, courage inwards uh, on raw materials to the materials used on jobs, which is 860. Then I also added higher of a crane for job. Uh, yeah, higher of a crane for job. Uh, this is a, a direct expense. When you hire a crane for job, it becomes a direct expense. So I, I added it. Then I also added wages traceable to jobs. Wages traceable to jobs, these are direct wages. So I added it as well. I, then I calculated them. I added them. Then I got what we call uh, the prime cost. Yes. Then the factor overheads. Wages paid to uh, main for maintenance is part of the factor overheads. Director's fees. Since they are on director's fees, they didn't specify to say it's office or factory. So I had to add it on uh, the factor overheads. Then factory rent and rates. Yeah, this is a, a this is an indirect expense. So we have to add it as under the factor overhead. Then workers, work salaries, this is an indirect expense. We also have to add it under the factor overhead. Then you have consumable consumer stores, it's also part of factor overheads. Depreciation on, on plant, depreciation on plant, uh, we also have to add it under the factor overheads because plant is used for factories. Yeah. Then we uh, lubrication or these are indirect. Uh, expenses so we have to add them under factor overhead so yeah i added it then when i calculated when i added the prime cost and the total factor overheads i got what we call the works cost or factory cost then office and administrative overheads auditors fees an auditor basically an auditor is found in an office so auditors fees it's obvious to say we we can record it under the sorry joseph just a minute joseph. yes sir Joseph? Yes. But, but uh, you, uh, wouldn't it be correct if you were to just give us maybe those totals which you added and how much they came into? That would also help us. Because okay. you, you are just item, telling us the items. Yes. Okay. okay. Maybe even the, there are figures there, aren't there? Yes, yes, there are figures. Maybe you can just mention to say the total for the prime was this, the po okay. total for this, that would be fine. Uh, but the, I am uh, I'm following, and I hope the rest of us are all following what you are telling us. Thank you. Yes, sir. But uh, I hope you, you, yeah, I want, because I, I, I just did that. Uh, I don't know if it's it's all correct. I just did it the way I, under, I understood it, sir. So, yeah, on uh, factor, on, uh, yeah, I, I was on factor overhead. So fa the prime cost was 209350 are you able to get me? 
Yes, we're getting you. We're getting you. Yeah. So the prime cost was uh, 209350 Then um, the wages paid to main for maintenance was 4600 Director's fees, since they didn't specify to say it's office or factory. So I had to put it on, uh, I, have to, I had to record it under the factory overheads. So it was uh, 10000 Then factory rent and uh, rates, these are uh, indirect expenses. And they have to be recorded under the factory overheads, which is what? Uh, with the figure of uh, 8300 Then work salaries. Work salaries was, uh, th these are salaries paid to workers working under the, the uh, working in the factory so they have to uh you have to add it under the factory overhead which is twenty thousand four hundred. we have consumable stores consumable stores is an indirect expense so we have to record it under what under the factory overhead we see the amount of 340. depreciation on plant uh if you depreciate a plant because depreciation falls under an, uh, depreciation is an expense so if you depreciate or if a plant depreciates then you have to, it has to fall under the, the factory overheads because a plant is used in a factory. Yeah. So the other thing, um, yeah, then after the, the lubrication oil is an indirect uh, expense. So when you, you add them, uh, when you add them, you get a total of 55,690. Then I added the, uh, the total factory overheads plus the prime cost of 209,350. Plus uh, the 55,690, uh, I got to 65,040 as the factory cost or the works cost. Then add office and administrative overheads. Add office and administrative overheads. Auditor's fees, an auditor is a person who works in an office. So the, the fees that we pay to auditors, they, they fall under the administrative and office expenses. So auditor's fees was 3,800. Office salaries and expenses. These are office salaries and expenses. They, they have to do with uh, with administrative overheads. So I had to, 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 to record it under the administrative overheads, 7,000. Then insurance on finished goods. So uh, when you look at finished goods, but for this one, I wasn't much sure, but I just had to record it under the, the office and administrative overheads because uh, these are finished goods. So after adding, I got uh, 13,300. Then 13,300 plus the, the factory cost, I got the cost of production, which is 278,340. Then add selling and administrative overhead. Selling and, administ uh, selling and distribution. I, oh, sorry for that. There was a mistake there. Selling and distributive overhead. Yeah. So for selling and distribution overhead, there is a, uh, if you look at everything that has to do with distribution and the selling of goods, it has to be, uh, it has to be recorded under these, the, the same heading. So like salary, salary is given to salesmen. Yeah, that's, it falls under the, the, the selling and distribution overhead, which is 15,100. Carriage outwards, carriage outwards. Basically, this is the transport used for goods that we sell. So carriage outwards, it's under the, the selling and administrative overhead. Depreciation on, on uh, delivery van, the, de the depreciation on delivery van, delivery van, so the van that is used to deliver goods, that's distribution. So the van, the, uh, when you depreciate this van, the expense falls under what? The, 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 the distributive overhead. So it's selling and the distributive overhead, which is, which is about uh, uh, 1,600. Bad debts, bad debts, basically the bad debts comes in when you, when, uh, you uh for example when a person fails to pay back the debts fails to pay back the debts and you 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 write it off so that's what that's what we call bad debts so they they, they fall under selling and, and distributive overhead because when you sell a product then the, that person fails to pay that money pay back the money then that's what we call bad debts so we we, we record them under selling and distributive overhead then lighting of showroom a showroom basically the way i understand it, i think this is a place where they Mm. Let me just say where they sell these same products. So the li lighting of that showroom, mm. since this is where they sell the products, that expense will be recorded under, under selling and uh, distributive overhead. Then we have, uh, which is about uh, 1,500. Then we have commission to salesmen. Yeah, so since co commission, this is the commission that is given to salesmen. So we, we record it under the, what, the selling and uh, distributive overhead. 
Then, yeah, after adding this, I got uh, yeah, 24,150. 24,150 plus the cost of production. Then I got the cost of sales. Since we didn't have any any sales, we didn't have, yeah, we, since we didn't have any sales, so I, I ended here, sir. I hope it's clear. That's what I did, sir. So I don't know where uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> yes, it's Sorry, clear. I, I was, yeah. And uh, thank you very much, Joseph. At least uh, 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 you, you've done a good presentation and things like that. I wanted just to find out what is the total cost that you find out what's it, when you added all of the all of it. Joseph. The total cost, sir. Let me check. I think I I forgot to put the total cost. Is oh, you it... forgot, eh? Okay. Yes, I forgot. Yeah, because that's what we needed to find out the total cost as well. But what's your number? What's your student number? Zero four eight four eight zero. Zero four eight four eight zero. Four eight zero. Zero. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your presentation, uh, uh, Joseph. Yes, okay. Sir. Any other? Do you have any other other presentations? Alice? Alice, did you look at it? OK. Jen? No, sir. You did not look at it? Yes, sir. Okay. Luther? Yes, sir. Mm. Sir, I'm sorry, but uh, this whole week I wasn't feeling okay, so I, couldn't, I, I didn't even do anything. Ah. Okay. Yeah, but Precious? Sir, I did start, but my work is incomplete because there were certain things like I didn't know how to allocate them on certain things, whether they are distribution costs or administration costs. So how did so you I hope we are going to know how to do that, how to do them, how to distribute them? How I'm did you know? Here. Honey, first of all, wait, I'm talking to uh, Precious, I think. Hi, Precious. How yes, would you have known, how were you, how did you hope to know how to treat them? I did try to consult a few of my colleagues. And then he, what did they like tell you? To me. Come again? Feedback wasn't given to me. Oh, okay. Yes, there, there was somebody who was was calling. Anybody? Okay. Enoch. Mr. Ferry, uh, I'm a dear student. Most of the times I haven't been attending. Also, class first there. time. You didn't. This is my second so, time. And then you have that exercise which we did last week, which we gave out last week. 
No, 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 no. Um, I didn't have access to it. Tried oh. to ask from my colleagues, and fortunately, oh. it's like the people I was asking were not aware of it. Sure. You were asking wrong people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the class rep? Well, I'm, not even... <laughs> I'm not in any of the groups for this course. I don't know if ask I can... Asking who is the class rep? That's why I'm asking. Who is the class rep? It's Joseph, sir. Mm. Oh, Joseph is. So, Enoch, what you do? Uh, Joseph, is it possible you could do... Just uh, type in the chat your student number and Enoch is going to get it. Or the, uh, whoever has not, uh, whoever is not on the group can get that number. And then, Joseph, you can be able to coordinate that, eh? include them on the, on the group. Is that okay? Okay, okay. I'll share okay. then. Uh, yeah, I'll share my, my lines. Yeah. They will teach me. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Uh, who else would like to present? Abigail. Morning, sir. Morning, how are you? I'm fine. I wasn't done with the work, sir. You are not done with the work, but you are done with what now? Well, I did hmm? something, but I didn't know how to how to classify uh, the different things under under the headings like uh, office overheads, administration, and the others. I didn't know. Did you attend even uh, our class, which talks about talked about classifications and how we can go about classifying this? You did, yeah? You you have been with us through and through. Am I right? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lisa Lee. Lisa, are you there? Uh -uh. Lisa, are you there? Uh oh, I've lost it. I've lost the network. Oh. And sir, I on the, the question you asked about the total cost. Yes. Ah, so I, I I'm, 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 sir, just a minute. I'm seeing it as though I've lost the network here. It's too, telling me that I've lost the network, but you can still hear me. Yes, yes, I can. Good morning, sir. He's lost network. Okay.
Joseph, were you able to add me on the WhatsApp group? I'm actually not the admin. The admin is Luther. So, yeah, if Luther can make me the admin, I can, I can add you. Sir. Yeah, I'll, 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 make you, I'll make you the admin, boss. We can send the number to Joseph. He will add you. I've shared the number on the chat here. Okay. Joseph, uh, let me just add you the, 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 make you the admin. We can do the same. No, no, I'm our Tenda Panga Mr. Good, not daily insurance and finished good. So, because the rest is correct, let's hope it is correct. Joseph, yes. You must, you must share your work with us. We see what you've done. Huh? I'm saying you must share your work with us on the group. We see what you've done. All right, I will do that. But I'm sure we're going to solve it here. All right. Yeah. So, Joseph, you are also the admin. And then for those who have enjoyed that, also sent the link my messages. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was booted out, so I'm booted in now. 
Yeah, this internet issues. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So you are saying, Joseph, that you added them now. What did it, what is the figure that you got? No, I I used I, I was saying that I used the format that you used, the one which has no total cost. On the example there, that's the, the, the form, format that I used. And there was no total cost. Yeah, there's a no question uh, there's, there's a, the question asked us to do to, to come up with the cost, total cost. Okay, I, I think I didn't okay, let me just read through the question again. No, it's okay. It's it's there. We're supposed to come up with the total cost. Here it says ABC Limited Manufacturer Company incurring the following expenses eh? during a certain period. You are required to prepare a statement showing the subdivisions of total cost. Why is that, Joseph? Okay. Yeah. I think the total cost. Okay. It's easy. It's just adding now the sub subtotals of uh, prime cost, wax cost, cost of production, and uh, cost for selling and all those things. So uh, that's all you and you just have one figure. That's it. Okay, it's okay. But uh, thank you for your contribution. So for the rest of you now. That what should we do to you? Person number zero, no, sir. We can give, give us another chance. <laughs> sir. So, another chance of doing what that that you 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 work on it, eh? either work on this one or you can give us another one, yes, sir. How so, we can I work on this one when you see? This one will do it. We'll do it. So this is life now. We're fighting. Oh, we're, we're just a bit lost. So a bit lost. Of, lost. A bit not. Uh, others a lot lost. You can say, that, but I wasn't lost. I was sick. Sir. Yes, Clint. Ah, uh, sir. Actually, me. This is my first class with you here. But I have this work, so I don't know if I can present right now. I'm just repeating the semester so I can remember the work. Uh, this is the same work you gave us last semester. Oh, so so you can you can present, eh? Yeah, I can present. Okay, good, good. Uh, yeah. So, do your presentation. Like I need to even to turn the mic on or the camera, or I should just be just. Be no, how are explaining. we going to follow? <laughs> okay, let me try to switch on the. So camera. you go to present. You go to present, then you choose it, then you share it. You go to Windows, then you you choose your uh your 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 presentation and then you you share it when you are done you make you you tell us you are ready hey eh? all right sir I'm having difficulties on how to put this on screen, but I have my work on paper. Sir. So we'll give you a chance that you learn how to put it, you present next week, or what are you saying? Uh, I don't know if I can make it, but uh, I can even present next week. 
It's what fine. do you mean you don't know if you can make it? Uh, let me try. I'm trying, but I don't know how to put this on screen. Oh, so learn how to do that. When you da you've done that, then you are going to share with. Aha! Uh -huh, there you are now. You are starting now. Now it's it's showing. Thank you. It's showing that you are you are presenting. Now what you go is go to that presenting, and then you show you go by the window, and then window. you choose. Yes. Presenting. Actually, I cannot okay, see go. any option of window here. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Can you click? Can you click on your document that you want to to share? Click on the. Do you have it there on your gadget? Like I just have it on my book right now, so I don't know if I oh, can put it oh, on screen. There. No, how can you 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 naive naive mufana naive? You need to put you need to put uh, that on your picture. Oh. On my picture. Okay, let me let me do that. On your gadget, then you to say share now. Okay, you get it, eh? Yeah, that's okay. Maybe we'll give you a chance to you do that next week. You can present. All right. yeah. Okay, sir, right, sir. So I found yes, the total right? cost. I found the total cost. What's the total cost? I found that it's. Uh, 302. Can you say that they should add all the totals for production cost, prime cost, uh -huh. and week? Uh -huh. Yeah. 302,490. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll look at that. Thank you for, yes, for your. Good. For the rest of you, if you, you got to do that, thank you, uh, Joseph, otherwise, for your, for your, for your, your, your trying. Yeah. So far, is the only one that has presented, and so far is the only one that has got the mark. The rest of you, zero zero. Okay. So now I'm going to start. Before I start, there's something. Uh... So are we supposed to work on it and present next week? Leah, what language do you speak? So I speak English. Andy. And Zulu. Andy. Lunda. That's all? Yes, sir. Uh, Zulu and Lunda. Um, okay. But uh, you can understand this Sesutu? Uh, no. Because it's closer no, to Zulu. Siswati, Zulu, and... Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. They are very close. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Wautwa? Autuile or Kautuile? <laughs> Kiotuile, sir. Utuile? Okay, so. Yes, sir. Na, akere, uh, I said. So you speaking you Yes. Uh, okay. Next well. week. Okay. Next week you are going to present. Okay. So sir. how are you going to present if you're not going to work on it? So I thought because you said you have given us zero zero, I thought maybe there's no point of us presenting. Oh. Oh uh -huh. okay. No, you can stay, then it will be double zero. <laughs> no, sir, I'm going to present. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. Thank you, sir.
So we can't hear you. Good that you didn't hear me because yet it was muted. So now let's say go, go to today's topic. Eh? Let's go to today's topic. You can see what I've shared, Ga? Yes, sir. Yeah. So today we are going to talk about costing of materials. Okay. Uh, the learning outcomes are that after studying this chapter, we should be able to. explain the distinction between the direct and indirect describe the documentation used for recording of materials and the uh, third point is that uh, we should be able to calculate the cost of materials used in production and the values of closing stocks using the five uh, FIFO, LIFO and the weighted average cost methods of stock valuation Lastly is account for material cost in the ledger accounts. The one we're going to spend more time on is the calculations on this. But these two also are quite theory, theoretical, and they tend to be quite a bit long. Okay. So, by the way, when we're talking about materials, basically, what are materials in as far as business is concerned? would like to uh, uh, give us a, a glimpse of what your understanding of um, of uh, your understanding of uh, the word materials oh, I try sir yeah sure I think a material is basically a substance used in the production of goods and services. Okay, correct. For those that are in production, that is very correct. What about those in retailing, retail business? You think they have materials? So, You're just a uh, retailer. Mm, these are goods that we sell as retailers. If I'm a retailer, then these are goods that I sell. I call them as materials. I don't know. I'm just trying. Good. What about uh, like if you're in education, the way Cavendish is, what could be materials for them? Uh, sir, like in education, maybe materials, these are books okay, that they, they offer. Okay. Okay, good. Can an NGO also have materials? Can an NGO also have materials? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What kind of materials do you think an NGO can have? Mm, can I try, sir? Yeah, sure. Um, like maybe like those who are under maybe data collection, like maybe ruin it. We can say maybe their material could be the tablets they use for data collection. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, what does this imply? From the answers you have given us and examples, it shows that every organization has materials. Yeah, it has materials. They could be different in nature or in form, 
even in quantity and quality, they can be different. But the fact is they have materials. So then we can conclude that material is a major component of any given business. And that's why we need to devote time to talk about it. Even the exercise that you did, it says you start with the materials first. That's what we encourage, as it is part of the prime cost that you have. Good. So let's look at now the ones we're calling direct and indirect materials after we have uh, defined those as materials. So uh, materials in the cost accounting are classified into two. There's direct or indirect. Direct materials are like the ones Joseph mentioned, which you use, which become part and parcel of the product that we use in production. Or for a specific job that you are doing. That becomes, so they are part and parcel. So we are talking about the raw materials, components, or sometimes even spare parts can also be among those we can call as materials. On the other hand, uh, uh, indirect materials are not specifically used to produce a product, or you cannot trace them to a particular product. For example, you need some materials to lubricate your machine if you are in manufacturing. Or you need the materials to clean your oils. You will need the, your materials to facilitate, to use them for holding and things like that. That to facilitate the production. So, that entails that uh, since they are not part of the, the, the product you are making, they are an indirect. Sometimes they are referred to as consumables. Consumables. That will include even like paper, cotton, uh, mutton clothes, oils, you name them, including, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, the things that uh, fall out of planks. What are they? My dust. Yeah. So dust. Uh -huh, that's the word I was looking for. All such can be used. Okay. Good. Now, let's go to stock control. Uh -huh. Good. Before you go to stock control as a system, what could we, what is the thing we refer to as stock? What is the stock? We have talked about materials, but what is the stock? I try, sir. Yeah. I think, um, Stock. These are products that I can give an example in that definition. Mm -hmm. yes, so these mm, these are products that are waiting for sale. Like for example, if we have products that are not yet sold, mm -hmm. are known as so, yeah. If we have products that are not yet sold, we call them stock. Okay. I think yeah. Even yeah. Mm hmm. What about the others? What is the stock? So can I try? Sure. Stock stock is like the total amount of goods uh, that are kept uh, for sale. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Others? What is the stock? So, 
Yes, please. Can, uh, I think stock are those goods that you have in sales, like you, when you, you buy goods for sale, mm -hmm. then they are in your in your business, you call them stock. Okay. And when they're out of your business, you call them what? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, Lupia, you are very interesting, eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other? And I like Joseph when he started by saying, no, I can define by giving examples. That's fine. Sometimes if you fail to define these terms, talk about an example. Yeah. And that's 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 very important. Yeah. One student who came physically and he's just saying and if it has come on a shallow ten minutes, you sit down and you think it's then you sit down and you're done. Okay, sorry, I, I was on pause. You were hearing the background, eh? Are you together? Can I continue yeah. now? Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then we can agree, putting all your examples together when you're talking about talk. So, these could be goods that are in your position. Yeah, that are in your position. But that are either been left over or that are yet to be used in production or that are yet to be sold. So, these are goods in your possession that are yet to be used in production or they are yet to be sold. Why am I using two terms either to be used in production? Because even raw materials, you can have stock which is in the form of raw materials. You can also even have stock in form of work in progress. You remember in the cost sheet we find that we find that eh? opening working when the, 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 the pro, uh, work in progress, closing work in progress, those are valued as well. So they are called stock. Then you can have your finished goods, and then you can have finished goods stocks. That's what I meant. Okay. So they are on those different categories. So it's important then that the organization must control that kind of stock. Because we're talking about uh, huge sums of money, by the way. Yeah. So it's important to establish an effective stock control system in an organization. So what are the functions of this stock control? The control system that you're going to have, what are the functions of that? The first is saying is the ordering of stock. The system must have that. The purchase of stock, the receipt of the order items, the storage of stock items, the issuing of stock items, and then the maintenance of sufficient stocks. So how many items are we talking about? Six items that you can think about under the same. Okay. So let's start with the procedure and the documentation for materials. This is from this point of view that we talked about ordering, for example, purchasing and things like that. Until we receive them, then we, we stock them or we keep them 
storage. And then at the end of the day, we're going to actually issue them either to the customers or to and to the a particular department who is going to use them. And then the need for us to maintain this. Good. So what are the procedures and documentation for materials? Uh-huh. Yeah. Since we've said that uh, uh, materials represent a large proportion of the company's cost, it is very important then that the materials must be bought in a professional manner or uh, goods must be bought or right goods must be bought for the right job that you are going to do. That's one thing you must, yeah. And the, the materials that we are, you are buying, we are saying they must be right uh, materials at the right price, right time, <laughs> right source, if you like. That is very important. So what is the requisition? That's the first step you're going to do is to raise a requisition. A requisition can be raised, especially by the person or people who are using that material or that yeah component, and then they see it's finishing. So what do they do? They raise a comp uh, they raise a requisition that we need some more of those. Here's an example of uh, how the, uh, the document look like. Now, this document that we're giving you here is just a generic example. You might find variations in e different e, uh, organizations, but what are the major components? Yeah, you need to have a department or job number you may need to suggest who's going to supply. Of course, requisition raised by who? Yeah. Then uh, debt, uh, when you need that particular thing, and the latest debt required. Yeah. At least you can have two. Why there are two dates? This is when you need them. But the latest is, you tell them how quickly you would need them. And then you have quantity, the code number. Code number is the code of the component or material. Then the description, it can say raw materials for production, for example, or components for repairing things like that. Then you pay unit, how much does it cost? And how many, you remember you have done quantity here. So if it's five, the unit is 100, then you have a total of 500. And then you raise that to somebody who's going to sign here as authorized signature. That's the way you go to raise requisition. Uh -huh. Any question so far? Silent means there's no question, eh? No, sir. When do you use this document? You use this document when you need the materials now. Let's say maybe you have run out of materials, or if you're first time to order them, you, you need this document. You need to use this document. And uh, we have said mainly it can be used by the people in a given particular, in a given department or section. Because are the people who should raise it. Raising it is to fill it in so that they can now pass it on to somebody who's going to authorize it. 
Is that okay, Lupia? Yes, sir. It's fine. Thank you. Then we go to another one. It's called ordering now. You, you have raised the requisition. Remember, a requisition is just internally. Now, an order is the basis for a legal contract between the firm and the supplier. So who gives an order? You, as the one who is buying the materials. In this case, like, um, if it's a company manufacturing things, then you give an order to an outside supplier. To say, can you supply so much? Yeah. And the orders must be signed not by juniors, but the senior people in the company are the ones who were supposed to sign that. Okay. So when you do raise this order, when the requisition is easy, immediately it is approved. When it is approved, then the next step now is to raise the order, the purchase order. Is that okay? How this... Uh, sorry, I'm feeling hungry. I'm eating a banana too. Yeah. <laughs> when this, uh, how how many copies need to be done? It depends now on the company, company regulations. Some companies are going to tell you we need the four copies. One copy remains with the department. Another copy goes to accounts. Another copy goes to stores and things like that. Another copy now goes to uh, to the supplier himself. That's what how it is raised. And here is an example of an order. It's not about uh, the layout, how it looks like, but mainly it's about the components that we see in there. Okay. So what are the, the, the components? You'll have your purchase order number or reference. That reference can even come from the requisition. So now you address it to the supplier. For example, you are going to say uh, JP, JP Chimtengo, Supplier boxes so much. Yeah. Um, excuse then, me, sir. Yes, please. Um, who fills in uh, this same form? Is it the, the purchasing manager? The ordering. Yes. If uh, you have it, but uh, a purchasing department, and the people who are authorized to do that, yes, they will be the ones filling you that order. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes um, if you don't have a, a procurement department or purchasing department, apparently even the, the people in accounts might be given to, order, to do this. Or if it is a, uh, the materials you're ordering uh, in production, they might as well give it to the production manager to fill it in but whatever uh, arrangement somebody must be able to check it and uh, approve it so there's somebody to check it there's somebody who's going to uh, supply what they can supply and then you how much you're going to give it to them okay from there then you are going to receive these goods now they have supplied after I've given them uh, uh, an order they supply yeah what are you going to do is to receive the, the goods 
So the people that receive the goods are those in stores. So they're gonna um, they're gonna then raise uh, a document which is calling goods received note, G R N, goods received note. Yeah. When the good received note, they have delivered. So you have checked for them. What are you inspecting? Quality quantity same form yes this is what we are ordered and this is what we want then you can raise a purchase invoice it says there a copy of the goods received note will be sent to the purchasing department from where from the stores the ones that have received and to it you attach the purchasing order yeah now who raises the invoice who brings the invoice where does the invoice come from any so from those who are su who have supplied good because the 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 purpose of an invoice is to demand that you pay them now Um, uh, sorry, sir. Another question. Yeah, sure. Uh, what happens if, let's say, you received uh, goods that you didn't require? Is there any other form that you have to fill in for maybe like rejecting the goods or something? Yes. Okay. It's called the goods retained notes. Goods retained. This is the one in accounts. You come to say after buying. Yeah, you say goods retained outward. Oh, okay. You have come across that, yeah? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So you raise that note. It's called goods. Remember what we said at the beginning? Uh, one of the things about the cost information is that it must be authenticated, yeah? Meaning you must have authority, uh, which is the document where a particular good is 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 recorded from okay so now we were at a stage where the supplier gives you an invoice again the copies would would we will would differ uh, that uh, that that that, that that you 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 may need to attach, but the three of the very important ones that you're going to attach is the order that goods have been received and the, the invoice. In between, there might be others as well. If it's good, like imported goods or very important big goods you may even have inspection certificate attached because then somebody maybe an outsider has to certify yes these are the correct goods but that one is those are exception to big big projects small things on a daily basis those are three things are important you got your order you got your goods, the received notes, and then the invoice. And that's where they will take this now to accounts for payment. Yeah. Good. So here's an example of purchase invoice. No, no, this one is a goods received note, sorry. Sorry, sir. I think I think I have another one which is a purchase invoice. Let, yes, please, Sunny. So I wanted to find out like um uh in this era we are in where um technology is widely used. So for example, like uh, I want to order like for for example we have um, applications now where you you can order like for example cement. I'm ordering cement. Um upon delivery mm -hmm. do i still get the 
good receives good received not or oh, is the same procedure applicable um when i'm doing it electronically yeah. Mm. What do you think others? You have heard the question, girl? Yes, sir. What has been your experience, Enoch? Yeah, because those goods that they, they are delivered, they come with the, the note. Really Sorry, you're a bit low? You're a bit low. Can you put your mic closer to your mouth? Issue. Uh, what I'm saying is, as the goods are being delivered, mm -hmm. they come with the goods received not. You need to yes. acknowledge that the, the goods have you, been you, received you, and are in you, the good condition. Yes. So regardless of the technology, because the goods come physically, which mm -hmm. means they can be accompanied by the not. Yeah. Yes. Does that answer your question? Perega. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you will not get goods on your computer. Even if the picture is sent there, you can't extract it there. Somebody must deliver it, eh? And then they yes, those, yeah, those who deliver they will make you sign somewhere to show that he, you received those goods. So these are the features or this example of goods received or not? Well, sometimes they might call it another different name, by the way. Yeah. But this is a typical example. So you got a date, our order number, supplier and suppliers advice, advice, advice note, number, then you got quantity, the category number description of the goods here you don't put amount of the goods so now you must state the the, the condition in which they were received yeah if they're not received in good state you also state what is wrong perhaps damages for example it's been damaged. Okay. Then from there you have you got to store them now, storage. After you've received the goods. Where do you store them? In the storehouse. Yeah. What are the objectives of uh, uh, storage you have uh, the following as some of the uh, objectives one we are saying you'll be able to speedily issue and receipt of those materials that's why you have to keep them. So you have a store. What's the purpose, the function of the store? To receive and the issue. Yeah, the materials. The second one is you can be able to identify the materials. You'll be able to see them and identify them. You can also put them in the correct location. Because in your storeroom, you have different departments. So don't uh, use the, uh, put it them anyhow, because others are what you can call as uh, dangerous products. Yeah. You want also to protect the materials from dangers or deterioration or sun, the sun that will damage it. You also want to ensure that uh, there is a security for it in terms of uh, safety, fire, pure forage. 
Somebody was telling me, is there a difference between pilferage and the safety? Yes, pinching and stealing. Is there a difference? Could be. It might depend on the degree and the magnitude anyway. The uh, pilferaging, you know, people will be taking small, 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 and maybe they can even be taking one at a time. One at a time. One. By the time you realize all of them are gone. But because they have been taking uh, slowly, slowly, you may not re realize them or recognize that they have stolen. Yeah. Then you want to have efficient usage of storage space. And uh, it's important that you maintain correct stock levels. And always update your system. You update your receipts, issues, and stock levels. Some companies, they do it on a weekly basis. Others, they do it monthly, actually. Yeah. So now, in the store, there are some records that you, you need to keep when the goods are received. and th So there are records that you keep. One is called bin card system. Another one is called stock ledger system. Mm -hmm. Some of you might have opportunity when you, you begin to go in industry to work. You may work in this, in this, in, in this, in this field or area, actually. Because up to now, it will never be eliminated completely. So you may have a job to be the one filling in the bin card. So, a bin card is a, um, it's in, uh, how can I put it? Again, uh, can we go to the old system in the library? Have you ever been in the library where uh, there is a section with the, uh, not shelves, what do you call, like my cupboards, with the drawers. And in those drawers, there are cards. Those cards record the kind of books you can find in the library. Each book in the library has a card. And those cards are st uh, stored in those Duma drawers which is placed in, 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 in the front of the door in most cases for you to and they're labeled like A up to F no A up to E A up to I mean, F up to somewhere up to until you have Z so the names of the books are according to that have you ever seen such a thing You guys are modern people. All everything is electronic, eh? Because even these beans, bean cards, physical ones now are very rare. Because computers have taken over now. But that's how a bean card looks like, like this. Like the same one I'm describing in the library. It is just like this. So you can have a part code number the location, which location, which shelf. And uh, these locations are also on the shelves. They also put A to Z up to here. I mean, A up to uh, F, for example, L up to E, F up to somewhere, just like that. So now you must be able to state which location you can find this product. Then the bid number, and stores ledger number because this doesn't work in isolation you go to transfer the information to the ledger and now there is a receipt side at the issue side and the stock balance so maybe on a daily basis if you'll be receiving goods you'll be updating your card so for example today is the ninth nine stroke nine 20 we have received the 
remember you have given us the name of the part or the name of the stock on top there so you just go to quantity received 100 and we got the goods received not number there you put and the, the date i mean no no those two and then we go to issues we got the date quantity and requisition number on the receive you go to give us the goods received number on the issues you're going to give the requisition number because before you issue to any department that department must raise a requisition as well then if you have just received you're going to put their quantity stock balance 100 the other day you begin to issue afterwards after receiving then you begin to subtract so out of 100 if you have issued the quantity of, of saying 30 then you know the balance is 70. okay Sir. so here is another one so before you go, you go further yes uh, Luther. can you yes oh yes the there is is this received mm -hmm. or received is that both? Yes. are you at work here or you at home i'm at home Luther, are you at work I'm or at home? Luther. So why don't you sit in a, in a room where... Yeah, so why don't you sit in a room which is quiet, other than is loud music behind, behind, we can even hear it ourselves. Well, let me just tell them to reduce the volume. I'm in, I'm in the room. Okay. Yeah, so as he's doing that, let's see, unless there's any other question on the bin card, I would like to proceed to look at the store's ledger card. Okay. Store's ledger card is quite similar with uh, bin card, only that uh, you're going to see here uh they're interested in the unit price of that product and then you can do the quantity i mean the amount let uh, by multiplying the quantity and the unit price so goes with the uh the issuings when you are issuing there's a requisition for it and then you're going to put here the amount did you notice that in the bin there is no amount or a price given but here in the stores ledger you're going to have your unity price and amount the rest of other things can remain the same ex except here where it's stock now balance you remember we said about the balance here again you have quantity and unit price and then the amount itself okay so uh, any question on the two documents sir on the on the store ledger card you said for you to get the amount you multiply the quantity and the unit price yes all right sir that will give you the amount all right mm -hmm. luther now are you back yes i'm back okay can, so... you, can you hear the music now we can only hear the talking all right now my concern was, i was i just wanted to confirm on the two the issue and the the receipts the the receipts mm -hmm. showing what you received eh? mm -hmm. and then the issues is showing what you you are giving out you are removing from the stock from the storehouse exactly oh, yes 
Okay, so I wasn't there when you talked about the store quantity and unit. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can just elaborate a bit. Oh, now that is on the store's ledger card, card because on the bin card you don't have, uh, they don't put the price, unit price and the amount. So in the uh, store's ledger, you're going to see that uh, you have quantity, unit price. Now, when you multiply quantity by unit price, it should give you an amount. How much, for example, if you, if you had bought uh, items, uh, 100 quantity, and each one of them is 10 kwacha. So the amount will be 10 times 100. That's what you put there as amount, 1,000. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, it's okay. Okay. Good. And then the store... Okay. Is it the store requisite number? Or... Which one? Here? This one? On the issue? Issuing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the first thing is that before you issue, I guess somebody is going to is going to raise a requisition meaning they will be asking for you to give them the stock. You get it, eh? So yes, I... when they raise that, they will, they will state that uh, can you be able to issue us uh, 50 units so that we use them for construction or building. Then you are saying, okay, how much is the one? One is 10 kwacha. So 50 times 10 kwacha. That gives you, uh, that gives you the, uh, the amount of money that you have issued. Is that okay? Okay, so, so you are saying the the requisite number is also the same as the, the quantity of, of uh, goods. No, 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 no. Well, on the requisition, yes. On the requisition, they will say, we are requesting for 10. But when you come into your shop, suppose you don't have all the 10. If you have all the 10, yes, they will be the same number of what has been raised in the requisition. Now, suppose you don't have uh, the whole 10. You only, you can only issue what you have, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, suppose you only have uh, seven. So you you won't indicate 10 because that's what is requested. No, you will indicate seven that you have issued because that's what you have. All right. That's understood. why it might not be exactly the same. All right. Okay. Now, let's go to material issues and pricing. Yeah, after we have introduced that store's card. This is a very important because it's the one that is leading us now to those aspects we talked about, leave for FIFO and things like that. By the way, you tell me if you want to, we go on break for some, some time, eh? Or do you think we can go on break and we come back and uh, continue at 13? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's break for for short period.
Okay, now I'm back. Are you also back? Yes, sir. Good. Yeah, trying to 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 to. Uh, I hope you are delighted before before starting this class. Huh? Did you have lunch? No, sir. No, we had sir. another class before this one. You had another class, just like me. Hmm. Ha. Anyway, let's continue where we ended. You can still see now? Yes, what sir. What I'm presenting? Okay, what I'm sharing. Now, we wanted to talk about... Uh, uh, issuing of materials and how we can do the pricing of those materials that we are issuing. Okay. First of all, there must be some or somebody, of course, to authorize that the machine, I mean, um, materials ought to be moved from the storehouse or storeroom to where they're going to be used. And to do that, there's also some documentation that should take place. Remember already we said about the requisition, somebody raises a requisition, and then you, when you issue those, it will be like goods that have been taken away. You can, you can, and somebody must decide, yes, they've gotten those goods. And that's the, when they have signed on that one, that's when you are going to use now to record in your, uh, stores ledger or mini card. Yeah, posting it into there. So here's a uh, example of materials requisition note that you can receive. Uh, date when it is required, the cost center or number or job number. Cost center could be a department, remember, or a division, or job number could be a particular job that you are going to do or maybe if you they are not uh, numbered you can even just a name uh, give a name of that job where the materials will be going then you got a quantity item code these 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 goods they tend to have codes and the description of that material and the, how much in terms of uh, how much they cost as you send them as we said, somebody must decide on that requisition, and it could be a manager or a foreman, and the date must be given for the same. Can I move on? I can move on. Okay. Now, at what price did you notice here? Here, we said the quacha. It could be you can do this per unit and the whole amount. It's up to you. You can add a few things, or you can just say the total amount of the goods that you have issued. But the question arises: is at what amount should we uh, issue these goods? Suppose we keep on receiving these goods, and each time we receive these goods, they will be at different prices. So suppose you issued some goods with the I mean, at a price of 100 kwacha then you receive the other goods consignment which is costing 150 and then you're going to issue this as well so what could be the price that you're going to use for issuing such a stock suppose you combine them yeah this is what we are talking about here. That the materials, when they purchase, they value based on the price charged by the supplier. Or you include also carriage inwards, which is like costs. Then when the materials are issued from stores, a cost or price has to be attached to them. Okay? or to a particular job that where, where you are going to, to put. Now, 
how do we value that stock which we are issuing out? Or it could be even at the end of a period. How do we value that? We're saying that a business might use any of the several valuation methods for pricing, uh, pricing stores issued, such as this. First in, first out. Last in, first out. Okay, first in, first out is called FIFO. Last in, first out is called LIFO. Then weighted average cost is called AVICO. It's just average cost. Uh, sometimes you use it simple average, but sometimes you, you most times you must use weighted average cost. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the things we need to discuss more now. What are they? Here's an example. An example is going to help us. I hope you followed the, your, you can see that, eh? I mean, you can still see my presentation, eh? What I've shared, eh? Yes, sir. So now, here's an example of the data that we have there. And then we're going to use the three common methods of stock valuation, namely FIFO, LIFO, and AVICO. Now, look at this. First January, we have balance brought forward of 100 units. And each of those units cost 50 kwacha. Cost 50 kwacha. So, the value is 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. On second day, no, on 9th June, we issue 40 of them. We issue 40. So the question we have is, at what price should we issue that? We don't know. And we cannot state. Okay. On 15 uh, January, we received 50 units. And these were at a price of 55. So the total amount is 2,750. Okay. On the 20th January, we received further 50 at the price of 60 kwacha. When we multiply the, the quantity and the price unit, we get 3,000. But on 29th January, we issued the 70. So we got two things we got to think about here. The ones we have received is straightforward. Why? Because the unit price is given to you by the supplier. But what about the ones we issued on the 9th? The 9th and on the 29th. At what price should we put it this? Now, this is where you remember one of the principles in accounts is that of consistency. Eh? So when a company, organization, adopts any of the three as its policy, we will be valuing our stock using FIFO. That must be consistent through and through. Until such a time when he, the board of directors could resolve and say, no, now change from FIFO because circumstances demand that we must use LIFO. Or now you can use the average. So those approaches that we're talking about are part of company policies anyway. Okay. Now let's practice the three of them using this simple example. So the first one we're going to use is first in, first out. First in simply means those we, uh, goods we received first. When we are issuing, they should be the ones we must issue first. That's what it means. 
first in, first out. So using this method, material issues are priced at the unit price of the oldest bunch, at the oldest bunch in stock, until all the units of the bunch have been exhausted, after which the price of the next oldest bunch is used. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, example here, and uh, I hope we don't have first bonds here. Who, are, who is the first bond? Is anybody who is the first bond? Me, yes, sir. Oh, no, mama, mama, mama. Okay, you don't be offended. I'm also the first bond, sir. Mama, <laughs> mama, we got so many first bonds. So, will you be the first one to die? Because you are first born? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if if we are to follow this this policy of FIFO, if you are first born, you're supposed to be the first one to die. It would be unfair if your young brother died earlier than you. But I'm the breadwinner. <laughs> <laughs> I never asked to be born first. <laughs> so that's the approach of FIFO. four. So we take out the ones that came first. I'm emphasizing this because as we move on, really believe me, people get confused. I don't know why. Okay, so now let's use that as an example. We are going to use our stores ledger card. And remember our stores ledger card has a unit, quantity, then amount. Unit, quantity, and amount. Unit in quantity, amount. On the receipts, issues, and balance. Okay. Let's go using that. You have seen the, the those columns that I've just mentioned, which are there. So we've got the date, 1st January. Any balance brought forward. Remember we had how many? Balance brought forward. So it straight goes to the balance. We had 100. And they were at 50. And the amount is 5,000. And immediately, a week later, on the 9th, we issue 40 of them. So at how much are we going to issue this 40? Because we are using... Uh, we are using... Uh, uh, FIFO, we are going to use it. the first ones, those 100, the ones which will, in any case, they're the only ones that we have there anyway. So you have no problem. Right? So we shall use 40, we are issuing them at 50, at 50 kwacha. And then the total amount of value that we have issued there is 2000. When we multiply 40 by 50. 2000. Now, on the 15th, we received 50. The amount was this, and this is a column for receiving. And the, 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 that, um, that, that column has sub columns in it, which is like units, price, and values. So we have received 50 at 55, 2750 there. Now we go to balancing. Just hold on a bit, uh, class. Uh, Thank you for that. Sorry, uh, class. Uh, yeah, I was on the time when we have received 50 and uh, this uh, costing is 55. The total value is 2,550. So now, when we have the issued, there are two things now we've got to remember here. When we had the issued the 40, 
out of 100, we still have a balance of how much? 60. Yeah, I, I, did you notice that in the same in the same row there? Then yes, skiste, yeah, skiste there. This is skiste is a balance of quantity, and at the price we're going to use the same price of 50, and that gives us 3,000. Now, when we are issuing 50, where are we going to get the 50? Because the price was 55. Okay, we are going to get the first. Uh, 50 we are going to get it from the uh the skiste that's why you find here there's skiste down there it's like balance brought forward or balance brought down so we got the same amount in that column and in this column but now we have 50 which we are removing and 50 there now the question is at what price are we going to uh, remove this? No, no, are, are we going to receive this? Not removing, we are not issuing, sorry. We are issuing, receiving this at 55. The receiving amount doesn't change, by the way. We are only having issues with the, the issuing price. So now, Skista plus 50, you know, we'll have now 110 with us, but at different prices. One, the oldest at 50. This next one is 55. On the 20th, let's go on the 20th January, we've received another 50. The price is 60, 60. Now we got to bring down all the two on top here as brought down. 50 at 3,000, then 50 at 55 at 2,570, and the ones, another 50 now that you have received at the skiste, it will give us 3,000. Now, here is where the issue is. On the 20th, 29th, we are now issuing. How much are we issuing? We are issuing 50. Okay, we are issuing 50. Yeah. We are issuing 50. Now, where are we going to get this 50? First in, first out. So we are going to start with the balance that we came up with. See, those are the oldest goods in our store. They are the oldest goods in our store. And that's where we're going to start from. So we start with this skiste. We have skiste. Yeah. And if this, uh, um, we had said we are issuing how much? How much? How much are we issuing? Let's go back here. We are issuing 70. Have you seen that? We are issuing 70. That's what it says there. So we will get the whole skiste and you put it there at that price, 50, then it's 3,000. So we're going to issue 70. We have taken 60. We still have 10. So where are we going to get the 10? The next sir, sir, sir. Yes, please. Before before you go, you move on. Uh, we are issuing 60. No, Isn't... the total number. The total number yes. that we are issuing is 70. Yes, yes. Now, the question, you I know that, that one. But mm -hmm. the, the, on the table there, yes. we, are issuing, we are issuing 60 because we, we are remaining with 60 per, on the balance. On the balance isn't, of 50 for 50 kwacha? Yes. Now, isn't the 50 supposed to be on the price, the price issued? And no. And 60 on the units? Yes. 60 are units. That's what we are issuing. 60. At the price of 50. Yes, but the, the way the, 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 the figures are arranged, yeah. 50 is on the units. On, tw on 29th? Yes. Ah, uh, oh. you were... Yeah. So, no, I, think, I think you're looking on the 20th. No, 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 no. no. I'm looking at the, 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 the PowerPoint you sent. 
<laughs> no, even the PowerPoint uh, I sent it should be the same. No, 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 it's not. Oh, you mean it 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 it, it twisted? Yes. Oh uh, yeah. then correct it. Correct yeah. it. All right, sir. Because maybe the figures were transported. Or maybe they moved. I don't know. I don't know, but the, the, the fifth is on the units and the sixth is on the price. On the twenty ninth? Yes. So mine is uh, just sun, like yours. Sun, sunny. Sunny, uh, oh. uh, ma, checking a masoyago, a libany masoyago. Yankala twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what he's uh, <laughs> ah, So does that mean I got the PowerPoint from someone somewhere else? Uh, who don't you. know? <laughs> I think hey, you did them. Okay, okay, the case, okay. I understand. I understand, though. <laughs> no, but it's good that uh, we need to correct them together with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So actually, it's it... quantities. Yes, it's it's quantity. All right, all right. Yes. The ni fifty is the kwacha, the price, and that gives us the three thousand. Now, one thing to remember, ladies and gentlemen. And this is where it gets complicated. And especially as you move on, there are more and more transactions. One thing to remember is always to remember that the ones who are supposed to issue that particular debt is such amount. And this uh, such amount in our case is 70. Now, in the OD, among the old stocks, we remained with Skiste and we send, we give them all of those Skiste. So now, where are we going to get the next 10? This is where you need to remember that the ones you have given, you must subtract from the total issue you are supposed to issue on that particular day. Once you do that, it becomes easy. So now, we need 10, which is remaining. So the 10 must be taken in the next oldest. And the next oldest is the one which is costing 55. And they were, there were 50 of them. So we are going to take only 10 out of that. And that's the one you are seeing there as 10 at 55. And that gives us 550. But then the balance now, that one has a balance of 40 at 55. That's the amount, 2,200. And we, we bring down the very other 50 that we received on the 20th, because that one we have not touched it. So it's 50 again at Skiste with 3,000. Okay. I don't expect uh, any issues on that. Can we move on now? Okay. Let's uh, try to use it. Uh, let's use another one. It's called the uh, LIFO. LIFO. It says using this method, issues are charged out at a price of the most recent. Yeah. So it's like you do the opposite of the other one. So you're charging from the most recent bunch received. And to continue to charge thus until a new bunch is received. Yeah. Yeah. So you go like going upwards. Yeah. Let's say get that back to our example. We still have our balance brought down, uh, no problem, 150 at 5,000. Then issue. In this case, we still have to issue. How much are we issuing? 40. And we're going to use 50. Why? Because it's the only price which is there anyway. I mean, the, the only goods which are there. Okay? So they're the latest, if you like, at the same time. So. We're going to use 40 at 50, 2,000. And we still have our balance, 50 at 3,000. Then we bring it down here. And we receive now 50 at 55, 272. We add it there. Please don't, that, don't be tempted to add them like this. To say 3,000 plus 2,750, you add them. Or Skiste plus 50, you just add them. No, don't. You keep them separate like that, the way they are. On the 20th, again, you received 
fifty, at sixty, three thousand, and you bring down the whole three balances together. Now here we are. We are now going to issue on the 29th. And at this stage now we are using LIFO. What is LIFO? Last in, first out. Uh, is there anybody who is the last born in this group? Anybody last born? Okay, we only have first bones, eh? Wow. Your parents are still young. <laughs> so now, what, what this means is, can you imagine your last bone is the one who goes first? That's what this means. So the last that we received go first than the first that we received. There are circumstances when such things happen, by the way. Okay, now, let's see, well, what do we want to issue? We want to issue 70. So, the latest date of uh, time we received is January 20. So, how many did we receive? 50. And the requisition is 70. So, the whole 50 must go. The whole 50 must go. That's why we have when issuing, we are issuing the whole 50 at Skiste, which is 3,000. 3,000. But we still have a balance of 20. So where are we going to get the 20? The next one, which is received on the January 15th. Okay? January uh, 15. And that is 20 at 55. And that gives us the amount to 1,100. But then you, this we have a balance. 20 minus 50, we still have a balance of 30. So we need to put that balance of one, uh, 30 at 55, 1,650. And still we have not touched it. The first one on top now, which we received, which is the Skiste as our balance. Skiste as our balance. You may ask the question. Uh, yeah, Skiste is this one which we, we had after deducting 40. So we are going to take that one at 50, which gives us 33,000. Have you seen this? This is like the last bone goes first. The first one was first bone goes first. Mm -hmm. Any question so far? Okay, it shows it's a straightforward day. Eh? Thank you. Let's go to the next one. Now we shall use weighted average costs. Yes, please. I have a question on the values. This method. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, what's what's now, why am I getting the feedback? My feedback, Enoch. You are recording. But again, there was a delay. I think it's the network. Okay. Can you ask now? Okay. Can you ask now? I was just thinking, um, the way this format is done, uh, why is it not that the values are added? Sorry, you know, you are cutting. The on the units and the cost price. Sorry, you were, you, you were cutting. We didn't get you. Enoch, we are, you are cutting, we are not getting you. Sorry. 
I was asking about the totals and the values. Are you able to? Yeah. Me? Yes. What about what about them? Yeah. Sorry, you know we are, we we are we are failing. We can't hear you uh, properly. Maybe class. Anybody who has heard this question, maybe you, you you have heard this question. You can be able to elaborate or help us. And what has happened to Joseph? He's been kicked out. My Oh, so the network sorry. is bad. I think he's having lunch, sir. <laughs> Yeah, but you guys, did you hear what uh, Enoki was trying to ask us? You know, he's breaking. I think his network is bad. Yeah. Okay. Network is but is there any other... Okay, yeah. is there any question? Maybe you may ask a question which he had in mind also. He says it's about values. So about What about values? Maybe you're trying to suggest something or you're not seeing them correctly or I don't know. Uh, what do you think? We can move on? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see. Let's then do the weighted average cost. Yeah. In this uh, method, all quantities of stock are valued at weighted average cost. Now, each time you receive the goods, there is going to be a new weighted average. Yeah? There's going to be a new weighted average, so to speak. Okay? Uh, just a, hold on. If somebody has persisted, he keeps on calling. Let me just tell him that um, we, um, we're in class. Eh? Did you manage to? Okay, class. I hope, uh, yeah. I hope we, you, you, you can follow now. We are saying each time we are getting new new products, we should be calculating a new weighted average cost. So that now, when we are issuing, we are going to issue at an average price. So we add the prices, then we get to the average. Now, there are two approaches. The one I'm going to show you is a very simple way, but there's another way in which you do the weighted average. Okay, uh, you just do a simple one. Yeah, let's start again. Where we are going to say on the 1st of January, there was a balance brought forward for 100 uh, units that at 50 kwacha, uh, the same amount, 5,000 value. And then we are issuing four dollars. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
So uh, we are going to issue at uh, 50, yeah, at 50. Why? Because we take that 50 to be an average price. How do we arrive at the average price? Well, we take the value and divide by 100 is to give us 50 anyway. So it's the same price. There's no any other one. So average is the same there. And that's why it's the same amount there. And then also our balance same. Now let's go on the uh, first uh, 15th January. We got the uh, receipts at 50. No, 50 units at 55, sorry, and the amount 2,750. Yeah. Have you seen now when it comes to balance? What have we done? We have now added. We are now adding 50 units plus 60 units. I hope you noticed that, eh? 15 units plus... Uh, uh, where is my calculator again? 50 uh, units plus skiste. That gives us 110. Who can tell us, how did you arrive at 52? Sir, so you divide 110 by the, by, when we add 3,000 plus 2,750, the total we divide it by 110 Good. when we get 52. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you. That's how you get the average. I hope you've gotten that, eh? Yeah. That's how. Some people use this other method they would take a 55 kwacha plus 50 kwacha divide by two but that one will always be giving you some points anyway they will always be giving you some points but the the, the easiest or the easier to do the waiting you add the values and divide the quantity in in it and that will give you the price so you the price is an answer to the division of the two the value is divided by quantity good so we have received that that's a quantity this is on the 20th we are again receiving uh we are receiving now 50. so this 50 we should add to 110 we end up with 100 and ski stay. To that 5,550, we add 3,000. That gives us 8,750. So 8,750, we divide by 100 and ski stay. That's how we arrived at average 55. So average tend to be moving as you are adding or as we are buying more and more of those goods. Good. Then uh, on the 29th, now you are issuing. How many are you issuing? 70. Now, since it's the average, you're going to take all of them 70 because you still have a lot, 160, all of them. You have mixed them anyway. You are not segregating whether uh, this came first, this came last. You just put everything together. I hope you followed that, eh? So now, 70. Yes, yeah, sir. 70. Now we are issuing it at the price, which is the average 55. And that gives us the other amount, 3,828. Is that correct? Can you divide that? That that figure is not correct, eh? is it? I've lost it by I don't know where I put my calculator. 
Shouldn't that be a zero somewhere? Who has gotten a correct figure? 3,850. 850? Yes. 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 So forget about forget about that that that's a, a type a type of error. Yeah. Put that because when we multiply uh, 55, we multiply by 7, it should be 7 there, uh, 7 by 5, uh, 7 by 5 is 35, 3, 35 plus uh, 35 plus 3, it's 38. Yeah, 3850, good. So that's the amount of money which you should put there. That should be just a typo error. Okay. But if you were using the, the one I was telling you about, you just add the prices and divide by two bars, you may end up like this with some numbers which are not straight like that. Any question? Sorry, I'm lost. Sir. How did we get 70? Oh. Oh, 70 uh, of, yeah, on the 29th, January, eh? On the 29th, yes. No, uh, we got it from here. Here. That we're going to, it is in the question that you're supposed to issue 70. But in the last yeah, two, the yes, no, it's this. Is that okay? But in terms of the balance, now we have a balance of 90 because we subtract uh, 70 from one skist and then 90. Then we value it at the same price of 55. Another question? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I want you to help me on how you are, I'm not very clear about the, how you're getting the, the balances this side on the balance at this table. Okay, like starting from where? You can, just do, you can just do one, uh, the other will, will be able to figure them out. Okay. In the first, we had the uh, 100 units hey, uh, with us. Then we issued 40. It's crossing like this. So when you issue 40 there, we subtract 40 from 100. We remain with the skiste units as a balance. Then we have received the uh, 50. So we're going to add this 50 to Skiste that we have received. It gives us 110. We further received another 50. And we're going to add this 50 to 110. It gives us 100 and Skiste. Now from 100 and Skiste, we issue 70. Then we subtract 70 from 100 and Skiste. It gives us 90. That that part I've understood. Now this the the other two parts like fifty like fifty two fifty five and now how you are multiplying is to get eight thousand seven hundred. <laughs> Would like to to explain now how are we arriving at those my fifty two? How did we arrive at fifty two? So we divided when when we add what remained, we divided the one ten from five thousand and seven hundred and fifty. That's how we got the price, which was fifty two. Then again, we added the balance for the receipt on the twenty third of January. We added 
50 to 110, which gave us 160. Then we added 5750 plus mm -hmm. the 3000, the value mm -hmm. of this receipt. We had 8750. Then for mm -hmm. us to find the price, we had to divide the units uh, or the value by the units. That's how we mm -hmm. got 55. So we divided 8,750 by 160, then we get 55. Yes, sir. Have we answered your question, Luther? Yes, sir. How about Manu? What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Yes, please. I agree on the 52 because I'm getting the. the what are you getting? 52.27. When you, when you add them? When you yeah, that's why I'm saying me, I've lost, I've lost my calculator. Uh, that's why I was saying, can you be able to find the actual figure there? What is the actual figure that you are getting? Okay, I'm not too sure if this price was rounded off. I'm getting 52.27. That is the, when you divide 5,750 by 110. Okay. That's good. It's good. To, I like people who, who, who were able to challenge it that way. Okay. You, you could be right. Uh, there, there are a lot of rounding up and things like that here. Okay. Let's start where it says the, uh, we had the 3,000 plus 2750 then we're getting 580 5750 then we are saying divide that by 110 it's 52.2 .2. yeah it's 52.27 so they you drop the tumangwe they just dropped tumangwe i think Do you get the point? In this case, in this case, we are saying the ways are not necessary. Uh, but in 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 practice, in practice, you must include them. Okay, in practice, you must include them. Yeah, times fifty-two. Yeah. Otherwise, it will remain as 57.20 instead of 57.50. So in practice, you must include them. Okay. There's another way I said which they do this. Uh, it's 55 plus 50 uh, divide. No. Sorry. Just a minute. Divide by two. Yeah. If you use the a crooked way, uh, the the one where you start adding by adding prices and you get the the average of the price, it will it will exaggerate more. And then also the other one method, if you drop to Mangwe, you might find yourself undervaluing. So this being an example, but the, the way to treat them is always like this, and that will be very close to the value. And if you maintain the to Mangwe, it will be, it will give you the actual value. And that's what this guy did. He got the actual values, but then he uh, just dropped it then ways when he was adding like that is it the same when it comes to 8750 divided by 160 yeah have you seen there uh innocent Enoch. the next yes. one the next one have you seen it's 54.68 so now they round it to 55. yeah so there are times when 
when it is small, I mean, it's mathematical, you know these things. When it's less. I shall have a boss. Start teaching, Masavaya. You guys, uh, is class done or what? It is 14 hours. It's done. Ah, I went to eat, so I thought I was not going to see you. Then I've been yeah? hungry from the beginning of the lecture. Duh, that's why I went to eat, and then when I come back, I, I find the lecture is <laughs> gone. Being recorded. He's coming back. Yes, he is. So. Oh. Eh? <laughs> We're almost there, guys. Then it kicks me out. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, uh, in the next session, we are just going to quickly look at the ledger, but we'll spend the time on the stock control itself, which is very, very important. Those ones will come in, especially when we'll be doing now uh, either the cost sheet or other costings, then we'll be asked to say, can you evaluate the materials using LIFO or FIFO? So in fact, that's where I wanted to end in our presentation for today, as the time is 14 hours now, 14.05 actually. Could there be any question? Are we together? Yes, sir. Okay. So, could there be any question? Because I, I want us to maybe we 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 stop it here. Sorry again. I mean, it took me long to to to, to start my computer. Almost, yeah. It was frozen, and then the issue of internet again here and there. But I think we are getting there. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting Is there. Is there any question? Yeah. That's a spirit, uh, Sunny. Uh, don't ever give up. But I'm just concerned. How many people are supposed to be in here now? Because this is the fourth week and we can just be fewer than 
10, 11, 12, uh, the number is not, it should not be fluctuating like that. How many do you think you're supposed to be there? Is it According because you have so another the class WhatsApp in the group, morning? Yeah, I think about 20 something. Really? Yes, sir. Yeah, encourage, encourage people to. Uh, this kind of thing can be rough at the end as you move on. Eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, this kind of thing can be rough. So encourage everybody to uh, to get on board. Yeah. That would be helpful. All okay, right, then. Uh, yeah, wish you the best. Have a good uh, day, sir. I've not given you an exercise today because I want you to work on the one that you're supposed to work on for next week. Is that okay? So are you going to send the recording? Ah, my, my daughter, me, I don't know. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll back away. You know how to send this, the recordings. You know how to send? <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm tired. This, okay, I want to check on this guy called uh, Joseph. He says he's not working uh, from here today. Uh, he's supposed to be the one to help me to be sending or to send it. So okay. maybe when he comes tomorrow, let me, I'm coming back tomorrow. I have another class early in the morning. Uh, hopefully you'll be in. I'll talk to him. Yes, he, he got to. He has to teach. Not only me. I think a number of lecturers are failing to to send. Eh? All right. Yeah. Sir. Okay. Thank thanks. You. Okay. Thanks. Abi tahu dia ya.